If you want to do fancy scroll-based animations, lazy load images, or implement infinite scrolling, then you're going to need Intersection Observer. And in this video, I'm going to teach you everything you need to know about Intersection Observer. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name is Kyle, and my job is to simplify the web for you. In this video, I'm covering everything you need to know about Intersection Observer. And on the right-hand side, you see the finished version of what we're going to create. We're going to take essentially this HTML that has a bunch of cards inside of a container. You can see we have a first card and a last card, and we're going to implement this really cool animation where they kind of come in from the right-hand side of the screen and leave at the top-hand side of the screen. And then once we get to the final card, you'll see this is our final card. We're going to infinitely scroll by constantly adding new cards to our HTML. So no matter how far we scroll, we're just always adding new cards over and over and over again. So using Intersection Observer, we're going to implement both of these and figure out how Intersection works along the way. So starting, we just have this blank HTML page, and that's because by default, all of these cards are hidden. If I go to my script, I'm sorry, my styles here, you can see that the cards have a show class we need to add to them, and that's going to give us our animation. So if I come over to my HTML and I add a show class to this first card, you can see it shows up here. While without that class, it's going to be completely hidden. So this show class is going to be how we give it the animation, because as soon as our thing scrolls onto the page, we want to add the show class. So in order to handle scrolling, if we go into our script.js, most of the time what you'll see is someone will do like a set interval, and in that set interval, they're just going to constantly check, is this thing on the page? That's not very performant because it's just constantly going to be doing work in the background and it's not always going to be super accurate. So instead what you want to do is use an intersection observer. So we can create a variable here called observer and we're going to create a new intersection observer. And an intersection observer takes in a callback and it's going to take in some options for how you want to configure it. The most important part though is going to be that callback because that callback is what gets called every single time something you're observing changes its intersection. So this callback takes in essentially a list of entries, and these entries are all the things that have changed, the things that have intersected or unintersected. So let's just come in here and we're just gonna do a really simple console.log of our entries, and our observer, we need to tell it what we want it to observe. So in our case, let's just come in here, and what I wanna do is I wanna get all of the cards. So our cards are just gonna be equal to selector all for everything that has a card class, and that's because in our HTML, all of our cards have that card class. And let's just make our first card visible because that's the one we're going to observe. So to do an observe, all we do is we take our observer and we call the observe method. And what this does is it says, hey, what I want you to do is observe when this thing changes intersections. So we're just going to put in our cards of zero. That's our very first card. So now if I inspect our page, we should hopefully have something console logged out. So let me just click inspect here, go over to our console, and you can see we have an array. And that's important. This entries that we get passed in is always going to be an array. And it's an array of everything that we're observing that has changed its observation, essentially if it's intersecting or not, within that period of time. So if we open this up, you can see our first element is the only one in here. That's because we only are observing one thing. And you'll see a bunch of information. I'll point out the most important things for you. Number one here, we have our intersection ratio. That's like what percentage of the object is on the screen. In our case, 100% of this thing is on the screen. So that's why it says one. Uh, is intersecting. This is going to be true if our thing is intersecting. And by intersecting, by default, what that means is, is it on the screen? Is it visible to the user? This is visible property. Don't worry about it. It's like an experimental feature that doesn't really do much right now. But important things here, we have our bounding client rect. That's the actual shape of the element that we're expecting here. So our target here, this first card, this is just the rectangle that defines like the top, bottom, height, and so on. Our intersecting rec, this one is going to be the amount of space that is visible on the screen of the thing that we're actually targeting. So this right now, since 100% of our thing is on the screen, this is just the same as our bounding client rect. But if only 50% of our thing was visible on the screen, this rect right here would show you the 50% of the thing that's on the screen. Finally, we have our root bounds. This is the bounds of our screen because our root is our screen by default. And then finally, we have our target down here, and this is the actual thing that we're observing. The most important properties that you're going to get from here is going to be is intersecting to see if it's on the screen or not, and target to figure out what thing they're actually targeting. So really simply, what we can do inside of this function is we can add the show class if the thing is intersecting, and we can remove the show class as soon as it goes off the screen. So we can just say entries.foreach entry. What I want to do is I want to add the show class if it's visible and remove it if it's not. So I can take our entry, I can get the target, which is the actual thing that we're looking at, I can get the class list, and I can toggle a class, which in our case is show. And then I can just take our entry dot is intersecting. So if we are intersecting, that'll be true, which means we add the show class. And if this is not intersecting, it'll be false, which means we remove that show class. And now what I can do is I can come in here, I can get rid of that show class from our card. 
And down here, I'm going to just loop through all of our cards. So cards dot for each card. What I want to do is I want to observe that card. So we're just going to say observe of the card. And what this does is it's observing every single card in our list. And that's because observe only takes one element at a time, which is why we're doing this loop here. So now if I save, you can see all of these cards animate into the screen because they're all visible on the screen. And as I start scrolling, you'll notice something interesting. We don't really see that animation for the card. If I scroll fast enough, you'll be able to see it, but you'll notice it doesn't actually animate on screen. It's animating off screen. And that's because by default, the way Intersection Observer works is that as soon as a single pixel of the element is visible, so as soon as the bottom border here is visible on the screen, it's going to say that it's visible. The is intersecting property here is going to be set to true. What we want to do is only set this to true as soon as our entire element is visible on the screen. That way we can actually observe the animation. And that's where the second property to this intersection observer is really useful. This is an options argument, and this takes in a threshold. This threshold is a value between 0 and 1, and it represents a percentage. By default, the percentage is 0. So as soon as the element is just about to be visible on the screen, then it's going to be considered intersecting. Well, if we put 1, that means 100% of the element must be on the screen before the animation plays, or before this function gets called. Now, if we scroll down, you'll notice as soon as our element at the very top starts to go off the page, now the threshold is not 100% because less than 100% of it is visible, so we call this function is intersecting is false because it is now no longer on the page and it plays the animation. Down here, as soon as the entirety of this card down here is on the screen, then it's going to call this function and say is intersecting is true. We change threshold to like 0.5 for example now as soon as 50 percent of the element is disappearing or showing up then the animation is going to play so if we look at the bottom you can see as soon as 50 percent of the card is visible then it goes in and up here as soon as 50 percent of it becomes unvisible then it's going to disappear so this threshold can be really good in our case with the animation we want to set this to one that makes the most sense because it's going to give us a really good looking animation as we scroll up and down you can see everything is animating in and out it looks really good now, one important thing to know is you have these fancy animations where things like fade into the page. I know if you've been on popular websites, as you're scrolling down, a lot of the content of the site like builds itself in cool animations. But then when you scroll back up to it, it doesn't rebuild itself, it just stays there. One easy way to do that with Intersection Observer is every single time that we add an element to the page by doing this show thing, by making it visible, all we want to do is just stop observing it. So what we can do is we can say entry, or I'm sorry, if entry dot is intersecting. So if it is visible on the screen, I want to take our observer and I want to stop observing this. So we can say unobserve the entry dot target. Now if I save, you'll notice something interesting. These animate in, and as I scroll down, they don't animate away, they just stay there. The bottom ones still animate in, and then if I scroll up, you'll notice there's no more animations. And that's because as soon as they become visible on the page, we're removing them from our observer so they no longer call this function anymore. And then once everything's visible, there's nothing else being observed by our observer. So this is a really great way to only do something as soon as something is visible and then don't do anything else. So if you're lazy loading images, for example, as soon as the image is about to be shown on the page, you'll want to run some code that downloads the image and then just stop observing that image because you don't care about it anymore. And it's great in this case where we have animations that we want to play only as soon as the thing comes on page, but then doesn't play anymore after that. For now, I think it looks better when they kind of come in and out, so we'll just leave it as is for now because I kind of like this effect and we'll remove that line. Now another important property we can talk about down here besides just the threshold is going to be a property called root margin. Now the root margin is interesting because this allows us to essentially offset when something will happen. So we put our threshold back to zero by default and we set our root margin here to like negative 50 pixels. Actually, let's set it to negative 100 pixels and we save. You're going to notice something interesting. All of these elements up here are not visible and all the elements down here are not visible. And the reason for that is because this root margin, when we set it to negative 100 pixels, it's saying that our container is now 100 pixels smaller than it normally would be. So from the top of our container, we're essentially subtracting 100 pixels. So now everything that's going to be leaving that container is leaving it 100 pixels earlier. And down here, everything is coming in 100 pixels earlier because it's 100 pixels from the bottom of the screen. So using negative numbers, we can kind of shrink our container and make things do whatever we want before they actually leave or before they enter. So here, this is happening after it enters, and up here, before it leaves, is when it's actually doing the animation. Well, if we change this to a positive number, such as positive 100 pixels, now what happens is all the animations are playing when the element is 100 pixels away from becoming on the screen. So now, if we just inspect our page here, and we go over to our elements tab, we can kind of see what's happening by looking at the class list here. Way down here, we have our last card right here. If I scroll it all the way off our page, you'll notice it still has the show class. I need to scroll it 100 pixels off the page. Then once it's 100 pixels off the page, now the show class disappears. 
So using this root margin is really useful if you want to you know, preload images because you can say, hey, when my image is 250 pixels away from being shown, then start loading it. That way, by the time people scroll to that image, it's hopefully entirely loaded. Now, the last type of property that I want to talk about that you can pass into options is going to be a property called root. And root is where you can define the actual container that you care about. In our case, we're just using the actual body, our whole document as the container. So when it leaves the screen or joins the screen, that's when it's going to be called. But we can set the root to literally anything we want. And as long as in your HTML, you set the root to some parent element, it tracks all of the children elements inside of it. So if we made the card container our parent, anytime a card left that card container parent, it would actually do the thing. And if we made card container scrolling, essentially we have to make sure the parent container is scrolling. Otherwise the container is going to be the same size as all the children. But if we put scrolling on the card container and now we are like scrolling our card container, which was nested in our page somewhere, we could do the same exact thing. So if we have a scrolling container, we can set the root to that scrolling container. And then when they leave or are shown on that scrolling container, that's what the root is for. 99% of the time, you're not going to use this though, because the actual root you want to be is the entire screen itself. Now, in order to go back to what we had before, I'm just going to change the threshold here back to one. So we have our nice little loading animations and they look really good exactly like we want. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is how we can actually implement lazy loading. Now, what we could do is we could do all of this inside of one observer, but this observer is really caring only about adding and removing the classes for actually showing the elements. And this lazy loader is entirely different. So I'm going to create a brand new intersection observer for this. So I'm going to call this one the last card observer. Oops, observer. There we go. And I'm going to set it to a new intersection observer. It's going to take a function that takes in all of these entries. And also it's going to take in some options. Now for our function, what I want to do is essentially I want to get just the first element in our list. So I can say last card is equal to our entries of zero. And the reason that I'm doing that is because we're only going to observe one thing with this intersection observer, and we're going to be observing our last card. So I can say last card observer dot observe, and I just want to get the last card. So we can say document dot query selector of our dot card. That is the last child. So this is just going to get the very last card, and we're going to observe just that one single thing. So that's why we can just say, hey, get to the first element in this array, because we're only observing one thing ever. Then what I want to do is I want to say, hey, if our last card is not intersecting, then we're just going to return because the only thing we care about is when our last card starts to become visible, then load in a bunch of new cards after that. So then what we want to do is call some function after this. So we'll say like load new cards. And this function is only going to be called if our last card is visible. And this function here, I'm actually just going to copy over because the contents are not very important. But essentially inside here, imagine we're doing like a fetch to an API. In our case, we're just looping and creating 10 brand new cards. We're putting the text content new card inside of them, adding the class list. We're making sure that we observe them so that they can do the animation. So our main observer up here is observing the new cards we're creating. And then we're just adding them to our card container. Pretty straightforward function. So we're just loading a bunch of new cards as soon as we intersect with our last card. And then a really important thing is we make sure that we unobserve our last card because we just observed it. Now we don't want to observe it anymore. So we're going to say we're going to unobserve our last card, which is just our last card dot target. Now, the reason this is really important is because if you don't do this, then now our intersection observer here is still going to be observing our last card. But our last card is no longer the last card because now we have a new last card that we just added. So what we want to do is we want to take our last card observer and we now want to observe a new card. And this new card is just going to be our last card. So we're just going to get a brand new last card here. Since we added 10 new cards, this is going to get the new last card at the very bottom. And here we're removing the old one. So now if I save and I start scrolling down, as soon as our last card becomes visible, it should add new cards, but it's not. The reason for that is because card container here is not defined. What we need to do is just create a query selector for that. Whoops. So we can just come in here and we can say card container is just going to be document.querySelector our card container, just so we can add it to our container. Now, if we save this though, we just refresh our page and I scroll down, you'll notice as soon as our last card is visible, it's adding new cards at the bottom. And if I get down to the bottom of our new set of last cards, it's adding more. As you can see, our scroll bar just keeps getting smaller and smaller and we get new and new cards being added constantly to the page. Now, one important thing that you're going to notice with Intersection Observer and when you're doing infinite scrolling is you probably want the thing to start loading before the last card is visible because usually you're doing like a network request, which is going to take a bit of time. So generally, you're going to set your root margin here to like 100 pixels or something just so it starts the creation of those new cards before you actually get to the bottom of the list. And depending on how slow your network request is, you can make this bigger or smaller. 
So now what happens is I start scrolling. About 100 pixels before our card is visible on the screen, it's going to add new cards. As you can see, our scroll bar just increased in size, and now we have a bunch of new cards being added to the bottom. And if I inspect our page, just go over here to our Elements tab, look in our div, you can see if we just scroll down, as soon as I get to the bottom, you can see a bunch of new cards are added. And again, once I get to the bottom, we just added a bunch of new cards. Now, if you enjoyed Intersection Observer, you're going to love the Resize Observer and Mutation Observer. I'm going to be creating videos on both of those, and as soon as they're released, they're going to be linked over here. With that said, thank you very much for watching, and have a good day.